Okay. So, today, we're going to continue a little deeper on our exploration into electricity. And I'm going to introduce you to three characters. The Indian, the Eagle, and the Rabbit. These three guys are the key to understanding electricity and making it useful. Indian, the Eagle, and the Rabbit. This is really all you need to remember, and you can use electricity. <clears throat> so, the question is, how do these three characters say anything about electricity? Let's go back a little bit to what we talked about last time, okay? Electricity is just like water. It works like water, okay? It has flow, it has pressure, and it has resistance. If you want to understand anything about how to get water moving, if it's water, the flow is measured in how many gallons per minute the water goes through. How many gallons per minute are being delivered. So you take a bucket, you put it at the end of the pipe, and you measure how many gallons per minute come into that bucket. That's flow, how much water is flowing. Pressure is measured in pounds per square inch. That is how much pressure is behind the pipe? Is it a whole bunch of pressure where you can't even put your thumb over the hose? Or is it so little that it just trickles out the end? Pressure, PSI. And then there's resistance, which is the size of pipe. Like, if you have a little tiny fish tubing and you're squirting water through it, you get a little bit of water out. If you have a four-inch sewer pipe and you're squirting water through it, you get a whole bunch of water out. The pipe offers resistance to the water. A little skinny pipe is a lot of resistance. A great big pipe is a little bit of resistance. So if you think about it in those terms, electricity is the same thing. Do you remember what flow is? It's measured in amps. Instead of gallons per minute, it's amps. An amp is a measure of how much electricity is flowing. The volume, not the pressure, volume, how much it is, not how hard it is. Pressure is measured in volts. That's how hard it's flowing, just like how hard it's coming out of the pipe. If you have high pressure in a pipe, you can't put your, your finger over it because it's so much pressure, you can't stop it. If you have a lot of volts, there's so much pressure, you can't stop the electricity and it jumps out like a spark. High voltage makes sparks, high pressure makes water leaks. Same thing. And resistance is, well, resistance. Resistance is something that's, that stops the flow. Here, it's a small pipe. Here, it's a device or something that makes it hard for electricity to flow through. Okay? Keep these in mind. If you want to know anything about electricity, these three are related. Because think about it. Think about water over here for a second. If I turn the well pump up so there's twice as much PSI, what's going to happen? When you open a faucet, what's going to happen? It's going to shoot out all over the place. <laughs> Splash all over the place. If you use a bigger battery than you're supposed to, if it calls for a one and a half volt battery and you put a nine volt battery in, what's going to happen? It's going to shoot out. It's going to explode everything. It's too much voltage, too much pressure. If I turn this pressure up high enough, what happens to the pipes? They explode. they explode. At some point, the whole thing explodes. If I turn the voltage up too high, what happens? Explodes. <clears throat> but they're interrelated in this way. Think about it. If I have low PSI, let's, let's do it this way. If the PSI is low and the pipe is large, how much 
flow do I get? I have a big pipe, a little bit of pressure. How much flow do I get? Big pipe, low pressure. Think about it right here. No? If I have a big pipe, there's no resistance. So all the water is going to flow. All the pressure is converted into motion. So I get high flow. What if I had low PSI and a small pipe? Then what do I have? Low PSI, the same here, but now I have a little bitty pipe. How much flow do I get? There's not as much pressure, and the pipe now got really small. It's like fish tubing. How much flow do I get? Very low. <clears throat> you have to have a big pipe if you have low pressure to get flow. How do I use a small pipe? If I want high flow, but I have a small pipe, what do I do? I have the same little pipe as here, but I need high flow. How do I fix that? You've got to have high pressure. See? Now you're starting to see relationships. If I have more pressure, I can use a smaller pipe and get higher flow. If I have low pressure, i got to use a large pipe to get higher flow. They all work together. What if I have high pressure and a large pipe? High pressure, lots of force, and a big pipe. We just flooded the front yard. Lots of flow. So you see, these three things are all interrelated. Anytime one goes down, another one is either going to go down or up. So that means, yes, math. The basis of electricity is math. Anytime you have relationships, that is expressed in math. So let's look at it. Look at our old friends over here. When you're doing math, you use variables to represent things, okay? Variables are usually letters that represent things you don't know. Amps is always represented in a formula as I. There's reasons behind this, but we're not going to get into it. Volts is represented as E. What do you think resistance would be? R. Oh, looky here. Our friends just showed up. The Indian, the eagle, and the rabbit. Indian is the flow. The eagle is the pressure. And the resistance is the rabbit. Okay? So the same relationships exist between these guys as what we just talked about here. You know how? If I am, if you are any one of these, you know where the other two should be. This way. If I'm the Indian, where do I see the eagle and the rabbit? The eagle is always flying over the rabbit. If I am the eagle, what do I see? Rabbit. And the Indian, where? They're next to each other. Because he's in the sky, and they're all down below. If I'm the rabbit, where do I see those other two? Eagles in the sky, the Indians down below. So with these guys and one little phrase, you know how to solve every problem in electricity. The Indian saw the eagle over the rabbit. That 
is the key to electricity because with this you get these if I know um, <clears throat> if I know what any two of these are I can tell you what the third one is if I want to change any one I can tell you what the other two need to change to by these math formulas let's take an example Remember this phrase, the Indian saw the eagle or the rabbit. Let's all say that together. You too. Ready? The Indian. Say it. The Indian. The Indian. Saw the eagle. Saw the eagle. Over the rabbit. Over the rabbit. There you go. You just know how to do electricity now. Let's do an example. Okay. I have, I have a device that says... This thing pulls 10 amps at 12 volts. It's actually, let's start with an easier one. Let's say we have a light bulb. And the light bulb says it is a 12 volt light bulb. And What do we want to do? A light bulb? No. It's easier to do a heater. If I have <clears throat> a thousand watt heater that runs at 120 volts, the question is what size fuse do I need to drive that? A fuse is like those breakers on the front of the house that if you get too much current, a fuse limits flow. If you put too much flow, it pops. That's what those breakers on the front of the house do. If you plug too many things into the wall, the breaker pops. That's because you had too much flow. It has nothing to do with voltage or pressure or resistance. A fuse has to do with flow. So a fuse or a breaker on a house limits the flow. So, if I have a 1,000 watt heater and it, and it runs at 120 volts, which is what our house current is, okay, we learned that last time, everything, the wall is 120 volts. The question is, how many amps is that pulling? Well, what we learned last time is that power, or watts, equals voltage, which is E, times... <coughs> I, current. So this is one formula that you know in addition to that. Watts, which is power, is the voltage times the current. So if I have a 1,000 watt heater and it's, and it's made for 120 volts, to figure out how many amps it is, we just plug what we know in. I have a 1,000 watts at 120 volts, and I want to know... What is that? So you'll learn this in your math thing. All I do is divide each side by 120. Divide this by 120. And we, we have left these two cancel each other out. So we have left the question mark equals 1,000 divided by 120, which is somewhere around 8, approximately. So this is amps. It's pulling 8 amps. So that's one way to do the formula to figure out how much of a fuse do I need. So what if I had 10 heaters plugged in? If I want to plug 10 heaters into this because I'm really cold, how many amps is that going to pull? 80 amps. Anybody know what size the breakers are outside the house? Hunter, you deal with them a lot. What size are the breakers? Usually, they're anywhere from 15 to 40 amps. What's going to happen if I plug 10 heaters in and turn them on on this breaker? It's going to put too much flow. Yep. So it's going to blow the breaker. I can't do. So how many heaters can I plug in? If I know that the breaker 
is, let's say it's 20 amps. If the breaker is 20 amps, how many heaters can I plug in if they pull 8 amps each? Two would be 16 amps. Three would be... What's three times eight? Eight three times is... Come on. Eight three times? Come on, Mr. Math. Waiting. 24. Can I pull 16 amps through a 20 amp breaker? Can I pull 16 amps through a 20 amp breaker? Yeah. Sure. Can I pull 24 amps through a 20 amp breaker? Yeah. No. So I can't use three heaters. I can only plug in two. This is how electricity math is useful. Because it takes math to understand electricity because everything is related. Now, I haven't used our Indian eagles and rabbits yet, but I wanted to show you a real-world example of why you need math and electricity. So we just figured out if the heater says it's 1,000 watts and it plugs into the house, I can only run two of them because my breaker outside is only 20 amps. What if my breaker outside was 30 amps? Now how many can I do? I can do three. So here's where we're going to bring these guys into play. What if I had to do five heaters? If I had to do five heaters, how many amps is that going to pull? 50. What's five times eight? Each one is eight, and there's five of them. So five, eight times is what? Mr. Math? 40. That would pull 40 amps. So I could, I could just go to the store and I could buy a 40 amp breaker. And I could plug it in. But here's the problem. Everything that electricity flows through has resistance. Everything does. Of some type. There's a general rule that says resistance... If you put electricity voltage behind resistance, which is a pipe, you're going to get flow, but the, but the resistance is going to heat up. The more resistance, the more heat, because it takes power to push it through. So that power in electricity comes out as heat. That's exactly how electric heaters work. They put electricity through something with resistance, and it makes heat. You turn on an, an old-fashioned heater, and you see the red glow. You turn on the oven, and the element glows red. You know why? Because they're putting 120 volts across some kind of resistance, and that makes heat. Electricity against resistance makes heat. Okay? Basic concept. So now, let's go back to our problem. If I just go to and plug in a 40 amp breaker, there's a real danger here. Because the wires in the house have resistance. Wires never have zero resistance. There is such a thing called a superconductor. We're not going to get into that today. Anything at room temperature has resistance. So that wire that's connected has resistance. You ever seen different sizes of wires? You have little tiny wires that you can use like to wind a magnet. And then you have the really big wires that we use in the house. Why the difference? Because of resistance. If you take that little tiny wire and try to run this across it, it's going to get so hot it's going to burn up. It's actually going to melt the metal because of the heat generated. If you try to pull 40 amps of flow at 120 volts through the resistance of that little tiny wire... You're going to make so much heat, the wire's going to melt. So, the thing to remember here is that heat, anytime you have resistance, you're going to have heat. So, how do you know if there's too much 
resistance in this wire for what I'm going to pull. As the resistance goes up, the heat's going to go up. As the voltage goes up, the heat's going to go up. As the flow goes up, the heat's going to go up. So let's say the wire in the house is a small wire. Wires are rated in, in uh, um, gauge. It's just the way that we do it. So let's say we have a small wire in the house that was intended to run 20 amps. That means at 20 amps, the wire does not get hot. If I put more than 20 amps, the wire starts to heat up because of the resistance. So if I go to town and buy a 40 amp breaker and plug it in, and then I go in and plug my five heaters in, what's happening inside the walls of my house? What's happening to the wire? It's getting hot. What happens when a wire gets hot inside of a wall? It melts. What happens if you have melted metal inside of a wall? It starts a fire. This, if the wire is 20 amps and your breaker is 40 amps, you're going to burn your house down. That's how dangerous this is. So you have to understand that because of the resistance of the wire, if the flow goes up and the pressure remains constant, you're going to make too much heat and you're going to burn down your house. So you have to use math to figure out. Somebody sat down and figured out, for this size wire, I can only put this much flow at this much pressure. And they know that. And there's these charts at the hardware store that says, if you're going to pull this much amps, you have to have this size wire at this voltage. If you use twice the voltage, if you use 240 volts, your wire has to be bigger. If you're going to run twice the amperage, your wire has to be bigger. Because the wire has a set resistance. <coughs> So that's why this relationship matters, because without it, you're going to burn down a house. You're going to melt something. You're going to get hurt. Electricity is very dangerous. Okay, so let's go to our friends over here now. When you're, when you're designing something with electricity, you can use these three, because whatever... The way this works, the Indian saw the eagle of the rabbit, is you, <clears throat> you can write out your three formulas, and here you can solve for anything you want to know. Anything you don't know, you can ask the question. If I want to know, well, what is the resistance of that wire? Well, if I don't know the resistance, I just think, okay, so I'm the rabbit. What you don't know, you are. And you ask yourself, where do I see the other two players? So if I don't know the resistance, I'm the rabbit. If you don't know the resistance, you're the rabbit. Where do you see the eagle? In the sky. Where do you see the Indian? Very few Indians can fly. Very few. When you have letters over each other, it's a division problem. So the, the rabbit, or resistance, equals E divided by I. That's what that means. So let's say if the voltage is 120 volts and the current is 10 amps, what is the resistance? It's really easy to figure. What's 120 divided by 10? 1.2. So I know how much resistance that wire has. It has 1.2 ohms. This little symbol is the is the ohm sound. Uh, resistance, I'm sorry, is in ohms. Okay? So I just used my little formula to figure out how much resistance there is. What if I want to get twice the flow? If I need, let's say we're, we're making a heating element. We're going to build our own heater. Okay? And we want something that glows red hot. And we have 10 amps available, and we're going to use 120 volts. What's the resistance that I need to produce that? Well, it's 1.2 ohms. What if I wanted to do the same thing off of 12 volts only? 
Now what does the resistance have to be? What's 12 divided by 10? 0.12. Really small. So in order to make a heater off of 12 volts, I've got to have resistance that's really small because I want the current to stay the same and I want it to get hot at only 12 volts. That means the resistance has to be 0.12 ohms. What if I went to 240 volts, which is the maximum you're ever going to see in a house? Now what does my resistance need to be? 240 divided by 10? 24 ohms. You see the range? One was 0.12, one was 1.2, and one was 24. Big difference. So what I use for my heating element changes based on the voltage that it's made for and the current that I want. That's how you work with electricity. So if you get into building projects and you need to figure out anything about electricity, it's really simple. Remember, say it with me, the Indian, the Indian. saw the eagle. Over the, rabbit. over the rabbit. And the way you use it is really simple. What you don't know, you are. Whatever you don't know, you are. And you just put in equals and write, okay, what do I know? Do I know the resistance and the, and the current? I'm, I'm going to see R and I together. So E equals R times I. It's just what we wrote over here. Whatever you don't know, you put that letter over here, and that's who you are, and you ask yourself, where do I see the other two? If you know what the current is, you take the voltage and divide it by the resistance. I'm, I'm sorry, if you don't know what the current is, you take the voltage and divide it by the resistance. So <clears throat> when you're dealing with anything electricity, the relationship between these three things is the key. When we're dealing with our little electric thing, now you can start playing with this. If you have, if we build a light, let's say we build a flashing light. And you say, gee, can we make it half as bright? Sure. How would you do it? If you want it half as bright, you're going to have to add more resistance so that the voltage goes down or the flow goes down, one of the two. So now if you have a circuit that has a blinking light and you want it really dim, you know what to do. Oh, let's put the resistance. How much resistance? Let's use our formula and you can figure it out. And you know exactly what part to put in there to make the light exactly half as bright. That's the cool thing is you can start manipulating electricity. You're in control of electricity. It's dangerous, so you have to know how to control it, but you can control it. And that's what all of this stuff we have in our house is based on. Somebody sat down and used this simple formula plus the power one, and that's really all you need to know. That's the basics of it. Okay? That will do it for today.